Hi everyone! Over the weekend I went to Tiger and got a few things and actually this time had a look around, usually I just run in and out, but this time I had a good look um, and found a few things which I thought you might be interested in. So first of all I got these uh, as croak uh, or the um, hooks and there's a pack of four, they come in different colors, I think there was I think there was another color, maybe silver or something. Um, but I got the black one to go with my IKEA card or that, you know, um, craft trolley. Um, and so I could hang maybe some um, things like scissors on the side or a hair dryer. I haven't decided uh, fully yet what I will do with them, but I thought I'll grab a pack of those. Then I also got um, this set of five yarns, so they're cotton yarn and they were again different colours there, so I quite liked these sort of burgundy fuchsia, two pinks, like a warm pink and a lilac and a white and they're perfect for uh, tags. Okay, so I just grabbed um, a pack with Heidi Swap Ephemera. This is, I believe this is from, it's so annoying that they don't write it on the packaging. I think it's from the uh, Magnolia Jane collection because it's got those uh, Magnolia Ephemera pieces that are um, the same. And that was a uh, Magnolia Jane uh, collection uh, tin as well so that's probably what it was but the reason i'm grabbing this is because i want to get a tag out and show you what it would look like with um with the yarn so there is there should be a couple of tags here here is one pretty one so there's this little circle that i will pop through and the idea is that I could get um, different colored yarn for the project that I'm doing. Let's do a pink one for this uh, particular case. So you need about, not even that long. <clears throat> I like them to be nice and short, so this is probably enough. So about the length of the actual tag. And then what I'm going to do next is pull them through. Like so. And then I loop it through. So for me, this is the back and this is the front. I quite like to have this little kind of knot sitting on the top. I think it looks really nice. So it's um it's going to be straight. It's not going to curl up like the embroidery threads that I used because it's a thicker yarn. And so I quite like this look. Um, so that's the reason I got this pack. Really nice colors as well. So let's look at the next thing, which is, uh, let's do washi next. So I wanted to get a washi dispenser for a while and then I saw these ones so they have them in two colors I really don't know why I ended up going for a pink one in the end because they have like a minty color and that would have worked perfectly because on my desk I have quite a bit of teal and mint um, accessories so yeah so anyway basically you can fit in probably about five kind of regular washi tapes. I've got two very thin ones. So if you take those out and just give yourself a bit more space in between, you'd be fine with five. Um, so so the way you do this, there is this kind of thing at the uh, on the side and you just twist it and it unlocks it and then you can pull it through like that, take it out basically, and then um, load it with new washi tapes or or not. And then to close it, you push it through here and then to lock it, you just turn it and it's locked in place. The other thing you can do is also change this. So there are two options. There is the rough tooth 
and the more kind of smaller tooth so I only noticed that after I set them up like that so I think I prefer the smaller ones and then they are designed in such a way that you can stack them so I got another one I'll just show you what it looks like in the packaging so that's what it looked like before it was opened So the idea is that you basically stack them one on top of the other like so and in a very small space you end up having your washi displayed and you can see what is where and you can kind of you know makes it easier to use because personally I I know I have quite a few washies but where are they they are all in different spaces at the moment so if I assemble it like that you know it hopefully will make me use my washi more often while we're at it let me just have a look how you change the this part so I suppose you somehow just click it out probably oh no you do the same thing so you slide it so you push it here, you push on this side, slide it to the left and then take it out and then you put it back in into the bigger holes and then with this finger click it in. So then you have the smaller tooth to cut the uh, washi on. So that's quite neat, I think um, looks very pretty. You have the color option, whichever you prefer. And then, <clears throat> then next thing I want to show you is a little ball here that I got, which is so cute, but I'm covering it with a piece of watercolor paper simply because I was working on something last night and it's um, gold leaf, so it, uh, it flies away as soon as you breathe or do any movements so you have to be quite careful with it but if I just try to push the leaves to one side and show you the beautiful ceramic um, work that uh, this is this is very pretty it kind of has this organic handmade feel um, where you can see the edges of the clay comes um, the the paint is thinner on the edges so you can see the clay and then the little kind of uh, marks it's sort of like a pale blue color I think it's just so gorgeous it's great for anything really like watercolor mixing or just keeping little embellishments in there for the moment I'm keeping my gold leaf because I um, want to share something. I want to do a tutorial soon and show you how to create abstract uh, watercolor pieces with some gold leaf elements. And I think it looks so gorgeous um, that you might be interested. It's just, um, I have been kind of into abstract lately. I got a few books, which I will also share with you soon um, about abstract painting. And I think the idea is is really kind of capturing because it helps you to develop your artist skills so two more things to show you um first of all the aquarel block i got two this time because i absolutely love them the paper is fantastic so i finished this one in no time i've got a last piece of paper left um this was my first one and that's the colors um I believe this was core watercolors and you can see how beautifully vibrant they look and I love the texture of the paper um, the, the grooves that the watercolor sits in it's really great for like you know for four pounds you get 20 sheets which are 300 gsm uh, it's quite beautiful to work on um, I mean, it's not artist grade, it is more kind of student grade or crafts um, watercolor paper, but it is really good uh, for that. And I also like that it's white, you know, it's not like um, off-white and it's not also a bluey white, it's that in the middle, like a perfect white. So that's why I quite like these, so I've got two. And finally, as I was getting these uh, aquarelle block watercolor paper, 
right next to it, I noticed this little thing and it says um, water coloring book. And luckily one was open so I could take a peek because when you buy them, they come um, wrapped in this thin plastic. But basically it's, um, I'm not sure how many, it doesn't, 20? Where is the English here? Yeah, 20 sheets. So there are 20 um, floral paintings or illustrations in here. And unfortunately, it's not bound. So there is this like a um, glued um, sheet. So basically, you know, they would come off if you keep turning them. So the good thing is, I guess you could frame it. Um, or you could kind of clip it on and put it like on a mood board um, or give to someone as a little kind of card present. I don't know. You could do things with it. So I think I'd prefer if it was um, like binded um, on the side. But anyways, the point is that it's got these gorgeous, very faint gray printed thin lines of different uh, floral illustrations. So this is Dahlia. I'll just give you a little flip through. Digitalis, uh, another one, Xenia, Rosa. This is the one from the cover. So it's right here. So it's like a water coloring book that, you know, you just color in. And um, the, the flowers themselves, most of them, there are a few that I'm not too keen on, but mostly they're just gorgeous. Look at this, Prunus. Cirillata. Um just loads of them. This is a uh, water lily. Nelumbo Natia. What language is this? Dutch? I wonder, I don't know. So either these are like the botanical names for the flowers or different language. This is another one that I absolutely love. This is peonies. Look at that gorgeousness. Really beautiful. I would love to watercolor it and then scan it. Or better yet, scan it and then watercolor it in different ways or something like that. Anyway, and this one is good as well, Rosa. I like rose... Um, illustration some of the some of the roses aren't really well illustrated or well, sometimes it can be the case but all the roses and the peonies here in this book are gorgeous there's some peony um what are these called uh pansies uh cosmos yes cosmos is also very beautifully illustrated and you can see the size of it you know that it fills up the entire page so it will be loads of fun to do these tulips i'm not too keen on just because generally unless it's a parrot uh, tulip they're just not that exciting to paint and then finally the last one is poppy so that is it for my tiger haul so really cool shop um, to go in and find um, kind of crafty things they have quite a few items there that are quite inspiring and um, pretty affordable as well so yes, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon.